Hello everyone. This video is a demonstration of the gap model approach. This is a new feature that is added to Fluent 2021 R2 release. So under solution mode of a user's guide under 6.7, you'll find the documentation. Uh, so primarily the gap model approach is used to block flows. Now there's a number of industrial scenarios where you uh, want to block your flow. A very simple application is using Evolve to block a flow inside a pipe. So what Fluent does is once you select the region where you want to block the flow, it will apply a zero mass flux boundary condition in those cell zones. So those cell zones are no longer participating in the solution. Uh, so the documentation lists a bunch of limitations and there are some recommendation on boundary condition and other things uh, when you're setting up your solution. So if you look down here, we can see how we select two phase zones or three phase zones in between which we want to block the flow. And then we, um, uh, we apply a proximity threshold uh, which is like the minimum distance at which Fluent will uh, block the flow. So we'll see all of that in the demonstration here. So for the demonstration, my model is quite simple. Uh, it's, uh, this this uh, is a pipe which diverges into two branches. Uh, this will be my inlet and these two will be my outlets. Now the circular regions that you see is for is, is to basically for my sliding mesh and the hollow part is my valve. So I'll rotate my valve inside those regions at a set speed and the idea is that when this valve is in a 90 degree orientation as such, uh, I'll ask Fluent to block the flow for me. Now, if you look at my geometry, there's quite a substantial gap between the valve and the pipe valve. But I'll calculate this gap and I'll ask the Fluent to block the flow when this, this distance is reached. Uh, so looking at my uh, setup here, so I've got my mesh ready and all my so it's the usual setup so in the boundary conditions something to note is that in inlet i have my pressure inlet instead of velocity because that's what is advisable so you have to use pressure inlet instead of your velocity or mass flow inlet in the cell zone conditions uh, for these two regions i have a uh, rotation uh, setup for about 100 revolution per minute after all my setup is done, I go on the gap model. So this dialog box opens up and um, you can select two phase zones or three, depending on your application. So basically my phase zone would be the valve here and the um, pipe valve here. So when these two are at a set distance, the flow has to be blocked. So I select those two surfaces here and I apply a proximity, some number. Uh, that number has to be the distance uh, at that particular orientation when you want to block. So I've already set up my gap here. And if you already set up your gap, you can always edit that. If you go into gap management and click edit, you can change your phase zones or change your proximity. So this number I calculated from my uh, space claim model. Once I've done that and I run my simulation, we'll see the effect. Now this is my result here and I've got animation for you as well, but discussing on the results this is a normal flow and uh, as you can see, the flow has been quite disturbed because this flow, uh, because the uh, valves are rotating here. So, at your regular orientation, you can see that uh, the flow has not been blocked. But I've only applied the gap model on this valve here, but not on the valve down here, just to show you the difference of how Fluent treats uh, the valve which has gap model engaged. So, when we go on our playback, and if I play the simulation. What we'll see is as the valve here is approaching a 90 degree, the flow has not been blocked yet, but as soon as it reaches the 90 degree orientation, fluent blocks the flow, as you saw in that particular moment. But in the valve here, where I did not engage the gap model, nothing happens even when it reaches the 90 degree orientation. So that's how the gap model works. I'll show you once more how it does. So as it is reaching that, so what it'll do is as soon as it reaches that, Fluent will apply a zero mass flux boundary condition in those cell zones right about now, right? So just so those cells are no longer participating in the solution, so they're removed from your uh, from your results uh, contour. So that's how gap model works, and thank you for listening.